Now, campaigners are bringing a case in Scotland's highest civil court, arguing that Holyrood doesn't require Westminster's approval to hold a second referendum on independence. The court has finished hearing evidence this afternoon and will deliver a verdict next week. For the 2014 vote on independence, the Westminster government officially sanctioned a poll under Section 30 of the Scotland Act. But the current case, crowdfunded by donors and led by campaigner Martin Keatings, argues that the Scottish government already has the power to call another vote, if not to actually implement a decision. Well, Westminster is arguing that it's a constitutional question which Scotland is seeking to answer without UK approval. Well, the result could mean more confusion. A win might push the SNP, who aren't part of this case, to hold a poll, but without the guarantees of 2014 that any decision would be implemented. The party backs a gold standard approach where independence is won at the ballot box rather than in the courts. But a loss might lose the independence campaign credibility, confirming that only the prime minister has the power to allow a vote. But the polls also bode well for campaigners. A survey poll suggests most Scots plan to make the 2021 Holyrood elections to the Scottish Parliament to be an effective second independence vote. And parties backing separation in their manifestos are expected to do well. 55% back such a referendum by proxy, with 45% against. And in terms of how they'd vote at a proper referendum, 51% say they'd back independence and 49% are against, similar to most polls over the last few months. And younger people are also increasingly backing separation. 78% of those aged 25 to 34 say they would vote yes in Indy Ref 2. Well, I'm now joined by the man who brought that case. That's Martin Keatings. Martin, thank you for joining us. How did it go today and are you going to win? Well, it went exactly as we expected it to go. Um, it was an uphill battle, uh, as per usual, like everything is, when you actually go up against the UK government. Um, unfortunately, it was, uh, shall we say, cast and surrounded by typical minutiae and technicalities rather than actually trying to answer the substantive question that was actually put to the court in the first place. Um, we found that uh, in actual fact the UK government hasn't advanced any argument against their position that the Scottish Parliament can actually legislate for a second referendum on independence. Instead their entire focus has been to try and kick the case out of court based on standing. Um, but at the end of the day, if they can't answer the substantive issues surrounding this case, then, well, if we can overcome the hurdles, shall we say, with regards to standing, then uh, we win by default. Indeed, Martin, we've got a few connection problems with you, but we'll, we'll bear with you and see how we keep going. Um, even if you do win, though, Martin, there's, there is no guarantee, is there, that any referendum will be acted upon? Well, at the end of the day, a referendum in itself is a just a simple, simply a way of express the, the population expressing their intention. It doesn't matter whether it's, um, it's done under a Section 30 order or whether it is done under other modes. Um, at the end of the day, it's just a free expression of exactly what the electorate want. There are numerous avenues to enforce that decision and as you'll know the the uh, un considers the the right to, to self um determination so important it is literally the first article in the un covenant on civil and political rights so there are plenty avenues enforcing the, the the result of any referendum whether it's with or without consent of westminster is ultimately something that would come next but for a uk government after a lawful Uh, referendum, and even if that's done without the consent of Westminster, if the courts have said it's lawful, then it's lawful. Um, th the next stages would be, you know, uh, would be down to, to negotiation. But it would be untenable for the UK government to try and de deprive the people of Scotland of self autonomy if they have uh, exercised their right to vote and specifically said that they want independence. It's, it's simply untenable. Well, Martin, uh, going from the British government, let's also look at the Scottish government. Why did the Scottish government back out of this particular fight? Uh, to be perfectly honest with you, we have not got a clue, or we, we have theories, um, but um, we, we don't have any uh, specifics on that matter. Um, the, the most likely theory is that uh, the Scottish ministers decided that they were going to allow the Lord Advocate to advance it on their behalf, because in this case we called the Lord Advocate on behalf of uh, any, sta any standing or interest he may have 
with regards to the um, legality surrounding the Scottish Parliament and separately the Scottish Scottish ministers with regards to any standing or interest they may have in the case with regards to the Scottish government, because obviously the two entities are not the same. Um, we believe, or uh, the working theory is that the Scottish government simply said to the Lord Advocate, ah, you deal with it, this will just wash out, it'll fizzle out, it'll not be a big deal. And of course, when the realisation dawned on the Scottish government that, um, you know, this case was going to court, they then referred back to the arguments that had been advanced in their name, panicked, um, and as you will recall, there was actually a, a leak, we believe, from uh, the UK government um, with respect to this case where one line, it is not for the pursuer to stand in the shoes of parliamentarians, um, was, was actually reported in the Times. This all happened at the same time, and of course the Scottish government, we think, just panicked um, and decided to withdraw so that you know any statements in the, the uh, arguments that were advanced in their name were removed from the record before it became public. So, Marty, I was going to say, I've got one final question for you. The Holyrood elections could be a referendum by proxies, we've been hearing, but there's still no guarantee that independents will win in any second vote, is there? Yes. Well, there's never a guarantee with any referendum. Um, that is just the nature of that is just the nature of referendums in general. Um, but ultimately, what it boils down to is that uh, the people in Scotland, unlike the rest of the UK, are, are sovereign. That has been defined again and again and again that we are sovereign, and it's our right, whether or not, it's our right to choose whether or not we engage in the constitutional question and at the end of that our will be done so you know there's no guarantees with any referendum like any election um, but at the end of the day the choice on whether we have a referendum is a choice for the people of scotland only and no it's not the fiefdom of anybody else martin keatings thank you very much indeed for talking to us thanks for your time